Hey guys, Stable here. Today we got a look at the Tier 4 Russian Destroyer at a Hocknik. We got troops on the screen there, that's the build I run on the gunboat Russian DDs at least. I actually got a little bit of a assist from a research team on this video. We've managed to unearth audio of the uh, development session for the ship. I think it was between like a lead engineer and like, you know, the Admiral of the Navy or something, I don't know. Let's see if we can get this going here. Comrade! Should we put lots of guns? Da. Comrade! Should we put lots of torpedoes? Da. Doing this is madness! We'll have to sacrifice all mobility and concealment! If we dies, we dies. Okay, very interesting. Thank you, research team. Uh, jumping into the gameplay here, we got a game on ring domination mode. You can see here we have two destroyers per team. Now, I noticed our destroyers south of A, the flank south of D has no destroyer assistance. So rather than playing the middle, which is not really a good spot for destroyers to be playing anyways, or going up to A, which might be the tendency for a lot of players, we're going to go over here. That's going to help support against enemy destroyers potentially spot and hopefully get this cap which is going to be key to success in any domination mode game uh, so we're moving in here and we're keeping an eye on things we're going to wind up popping up pretty close to a mayhem here now one of the advantages of the ad hoc you can see lots of guns but you also notice you can turn the ship you know you can change the direction that the guns are pointing off very easily they all are 360 degree rotators so if I need to change which side of the ship that we're um, firing from like we need to turn suddenly or whatever a uh, very quick transition time now the traverse typical Soviet destroyer traverse pretty slow of course if you're running Splendido uh, the Sergio <laughs> the Halloween commander he's got a little bit of a boost to that I don't have a lot of points in him yet but I think he's pretty intriguing I'm gonna plan on setting up one Destroyer commander for this line for the more torpedo centric boats and one more for the gunboats Anyway, we're going to move into here to D. We've noticed that it's been contested or it was being captured So we knew the destroyer was in the area look at the damage output that this thing's capable of when we're landing a lot of shots like that We take a third of the health of the mayhem down and he's already in serious trouble Now he's going to be backing up here and trying to get into the smoke cloud which he previously uh, squirted from Fortunately, we missed a pretty good chunk of that volley there. I'm a little, watching this back, I'm wondering why I wasn't launching the torpedoes. We'll see one uh, instance of the torpedoes being pretty effective later in the game. But you actually have four torpedo launchers. Now, these are the close-range suicide Russian-style torpedoes. So you got to pick your situations. You don't want to sacrifice your ship just to get these torpedoes in the water. That's a common theme for the Russian destroyers, and it's a common mistake that you usually see. Uh, the destroyer players think they're born to torpedo, it doesn't matter what nation they're in. These are typically gunboats, so you want to be relying on the guns, but if you get into these situations where you're close range, and you can do so safely, either by looking at your own HP or using the terrain, uh, then potentially you can get these deadly strikes. But that's a lot of torpedoes in the water. Now the Mayhem's going to just happen to be located just on the right edge of that cloud. So who's actually going to survive that? That's why I'm saying, uh, having launched those torps once he backed up back into the smoke might have been a little bit more profitable. Number one, we would have had a better idea where he actually was. And number two, you know, he would have had less time to start thinking about uh, incoming torpedo cells. Anyway, the smoke is beginning to dissipate or he leaves. And uh, we resume gunning him down. Now, typically the Mayhem is going to be one of the more fearsome destroyers for other destroyers to run into. But the Adahoknik, uh certainly on the top of that list for Tier 4. We go ahead and take him down. Notice our position. We're centrally located between this Iron Duke and whatever that battleship is to the north, uh, northeast there. Immediately have to pop the smoke. We do want to capture this base, of course. But when you're centrally located as I would call that position between, or kind of among red ships like that, you're in extreme danger for destroyers. It's very hard to disengage in those situations because you really limit your options to leave, but also you're going to have multiple ships potentially shooting at you, so we got to pop the smoke there. I want to take this instance. This is a good gunboat. We got good 
offensive firepower here. That's probably the best salvo we're going to get on this Iron Duke. About 1,000 damage. Usually these salvos are going to be getting about 300, maybe 600 damage. And conceptually, when that guy's got 15,000 HP and we're firing, what, every 8 seconds, 9 seconds, whatever it is, that's going to take minutes, potentially the rest of the match, to gun these things down. A co very common mistake for destroyers, especially when they're sailing around in the water, a lot of times they'll launch torps and then if they see they're going to miss, then they'll just start firing their guns, either out of frustration or because they think they need to be doing damage. But if you're doing 300 damage, you know, every 5 to 10 seconds against a target that has thousands and thousands of HP, you're not going to kill the thing. But you're also risking your ship if you're doing it in the open water. So I'll talk about that again here in an upcoming sequence. But destroyer players, I use the guns a lot and I advocate using them, but you got to use them smartly and you got to understand what am I capable of? If it's going to take minutes and minutes to do what you think you're trying to do, do something else because it's usually not a good play. Anyway, rather than getting bogged down on that guy or bogged down on the battleship to the northeast, we recognize the game is being decided currently in the northwest. Now that's, our team's losing badly over there. Uh, we're down a couple ships. They just got the cap tying up the you know income potential for both teams. So I decide we want to go over there, hopefully get that destroyer off the board, hopefully get some caps coming our way. That's going to swing the balance of power in this game rather than dealing with these battleships where I either got, real, got to get really close to them to torpedo them, putting myself at risk, or trying to gun them down at an anemic pace like we were just discussing. Now we're about to pop into the pods view we actually just did there, but moving into this situation, I'm thinking where is the pod going? He's either going to go try and get a cap or try and torp something. So I assumed he was coming down here. We're kind of expecting it. I didn't expect him to be there that quick. Here's a good example of I need to fire a salvo off with my main guns, then launch those torps. I'm assuming he's trying to smoke as we saw him deploying the smoke. So I wanted to get those torpedoes down uh, before we lost them. That was the thinking there, but fire the main guns, then do it. That's usually... I harp about it a lot, destroyer v destroyer conflicts. Uh, players spend too much time laying down torpedoes, which are very easily dodged by enemy destroyer players. And then, meanwhile, they're getting pummeled by the guns and they end up losing the engagement. Try and use your guns, use your guns, use your guns, and if you can get some torpedoes off in between those salvos, that's the best time to do it. Number one, it makes them less expected because they think you're firing the guns. They don't think you're in torpedo mode but it's also just better to be doing, dealing that damage. Uh, Budioni pops up there. We do turn. Would like to have AP loaded here, but we time is of the essence. Well, this guy is available to kill. We need to kill him. He's just sitting still, blast him with the HE, and down he goes. That is going to cause us to be spotted here, but the Ismail, we're going to zoom in on him, see his guns aren't pointed on us, and he has no other ships that are around here. So that's going to inform are thinking on whether we want to shoot this guy. Once again, we cannot gun an Ismail down uh, in a destroyer, let alone, or in a Hockneck, let alone any destroyer. But we're going to take a couple shots here. Number one, again, no support ships that are going to shoot us when we're spotted. Number two, he's not aiming at us. Number three, he's about to break natural line of sight between us. Um, just based on his movement, he's going around that island. So at most, we're going to be really spotted over here for 5, 10 seconds, whatever it ends up being. So safe play there, whether we got 300 damage or, you know, 2,000 plus a couple fires, doesn't really matter. It's still worth taking those shots. The counter-argument is they don't really know where I am, but this ship isn't really relying on stealth. The name of the game at this point in time is... You can see the situation. We're down in score. We're down in ships. We need to get these caps flipped. So we're going to capture this one. We're going to capture the one to the east. And then we're going to respond to what the enemy is doing there. I think if they go ring around the rosy, uh, they could potentially win this as long as they're flipping our caps. But it's it's too early to make that judgment call. This is my although He's actually going to take a shot from this Arizona once we disengage. That's my other concern is this... Uh, we have one Arizona left on our team. Uh, he's been kind of backlining it, preserving his HP. Usually that's not indicative of someone that's that reliable in these endgame situations. They might be learning the game, and they're still trying to figure out the strategy. So I, that part's making me a little bit nervous, but again, I can't reliably kill that Ismail. I can bum rush him, 
We do have the HP to likely survive a suicide torpedo strike at this point in time. But going to the west is taking me away from these caps. That's going to take a few minutes. And in that time, uh, you know, technically we would be winning if we scored a battleship kill here. But if they kill that Arizona because they're engaging them from the east, the trailing battleships, that's going to flip right back. So we need to focus on the caps first, get an advantage in the income, then we can worry about it. But luckily, the Arizona does kill the Ismail. Now that relieves a lot of the pressure on this team. And it's going to make it give us more options to win the game and make it easier overall. So good job there by the Arizona. Uh, hasn't happened yet, but <laughs> a little bit of forecasting there. I'm going to move in here, keep an eye on the map. You can see they're kind of going around in the toilet bowl around the circle motion. So as of right now, I'm just thinking we're probably just going to rely on our speed and uh, flip the caps faster than they can flip them. They have you know slow lumbering battleships, low tier battleships, not known for their speed. So it's going to take them longer to go from that southeast cap to the southwest cap than it's going to take me to go from the northeast cap to the southeast cap and so forth. I can just cap these bases a lot quicker than they can and a lot more safely, frankly, because they can take incoming fire. Once I secure this cap, of course, I'm going to move forward, begin contesting and hopefully securing the other one. I would like to chime in on the guns, though. If we can start shooting these battleships, again, we're not... There's the kill on the Ismail, which was key, by the way. But doing the damage with the guns is not really that great of an idea with these battleships. You know, the guns on the Hawknik are really good, but they're really good against uh, destroyers. They're pretty dang good to really good against cruisers. Battleships, they're, you know, tier four <laughs> destroyer guns. But shooting at them, potentially, number one, we're going to be aggravating them, causing them consternation, stress, making it harder for them to aim and uh, think about what they need to be doing. But number two, we can potentially peel them off. Now, the California is actually going to have the game awareness to figure out that they're going to lose the game based on what's happening right now. We're going to be outcapping them. We're actually going to cons be uh, controlling all the caps here in a moment. And he recognizes a game that a few minutes ago looked like it was going to be kind of a butt-kicking uh, in their favor. All of a sudden, they're in position to lose this. And these are the games that are very frustrating to be playing uh, when you see these, you know, pretty solid chance of winning games slip away from you. It's just usually one team is trying to win the game, the other team is trying to kill the enemy ships. That's usually the breakdown. Uh, but California is going to turn around. Now, once I do capture D, the correct play at that point in time, turn around, sail off to the Antarctic or whatever, win the game on score. I've, in the mentality, i got to help this guy. I mean, they are flipping C, but once I have this, even if they get C, um, you know, it's still a three cap to one advantage. It's going to take them, there's three minutes left in the game. It would take them three minutes to get to the next cap. So as long as we do, both don't die in this situation, uh, the game's won. 100 point swing for Battleship since we're up over 100 points over them. Even if the guy on my team dies, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Maybe I was going for style points. I'm just trying to get a little bit more score. But California does turn around and respond. Now he's got a plane spotting us. And he's actually going to drop spot there. Now this is making me a little bit nervous. Because initially I'm thinking to just back up. I'm, California is extremely slow. Uh, us backing up is extremely slow. But I'm thinking I could probably get around that island. The problem is he knows until that plane lost sight of us. He knows what's going on. He knows where we are. He knows how fast he's going. I don't have that information. So that's making me just nervous enough because this is throw territory here if we both go down. I don't know what the battleship situation is, but I'm thinking 10K health. What's the odds of California can one-shot me? Not very great. You know, you'd have to have HE. You'd have to hit the majority of the shells. Not the easiest thing to do. Not impossible, but we're going to take the chance here being able to withstand one... Uh, salvo. These are when the, tor the suicide torpedo rushes are effective. He did have HE loaded. He did hit us a fair amount. He hit us hard, but wasn't enough to kill us. If you got the HP to do it, then you can make that play. If you don't, if I had 2,000 HP there, I would be uh, aggressively evading the situation. Anyways, we launched one. We expected a base maneuver, so we held more salvos. You see a lot of times these torpedo strikes miss when you launch them all. We knew he was going to turn, so we waited for him. Once the battleship turns, he can't re 
he can't turn back into us. And there's a Hegon, by the way. He can't turn back into us to dodge those. They don't have the maneuverability. They don't have the ability to make that uh, kind of S-shaped turn like that. So once he kind of turned in there, flat broadside, that's the juicy part of the ship. That's where you want to be torping them. Shooting the torps at the ship coming at you. They're going to potentially dodge all of them or the majority. And uh, if we miss those torpedoes, we die. Because he would definitely get the guns back on us and he would blow us out of the water. And again, we don't want to be relying on our battleship to close out the game. Even though I think uh, likely he's going to win that engagement. But we don't want to rely on it. So that's why that play was made. Anyway, that's a look at the Ad Hoc Nick and some decision making that went into that game. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel consider subscribing. There's a lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And we'll see y'all later. Peace.